What's going on? This is Brandon Epstein from Mental Fitness Training. And in this video today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how you can use mental fitness training in boxing specifically. Now, if you've seen other videos on this channel, you probably know that the principles I'm gonna share here are really applicable with all different aspects of your life, no matter what skill you're interested in, whatever you're trying to improve at, really you can use what I teach in mental fitness training for just about anything. The reason I've decided to pick boxing specifically is for a couple reasons. Number one, I work professional boxers uh, personally as my clients and so I have a lot of background in this experience. I also just love boxing. Uh, I personally do boxing myself and continue to spar and you know, we'll see if I can get one of those YouTube fights one of these days, I'd be happy to take that on. And the final reason is because boxing is probably the most mentally demanding sport in the world. Uh, boxing along with other martial arts because when you're shooting a three-pointer in, in the ba professional basketball, you're not worried, okay, if the shot doesn't go in, I'm gonna die. Versus the truth is every fighter knows that when they get in the ring, they are putting their life on the line, which is why you have to get so mentally tapped in to be able to perform your best so you, you don't lose your life. And hopefully, not only do you just survive, but you also are able to show up and perform your best. So I got some notes here I'm gonna run you guys through. Um, I'm gonna take you through essentially my blueprint for achieving the way you wanna feel, the way you wanna behave, so your habits, and what you wanna create. And so, for mental fitness training, it all starts with awareness. So as a boxer, you need to become, number one, aware of what your strengths and weaknesses are, okay? You should not, try and, you should not be trying to box like someone you're not, all right? So I'm a pretty tall guy, and I need to use my range. So that's just normal awareness in boxing um, for what your skill set is, what your genetics predispose you to, and how you need to show up in the ring. Now the second part of awareness is just understanding how you feel at any given moment. Answering the question, what's it like to be me right now? And the reason why this is important is because if you don't know what your experience is in the present moment, then you don't know how to optimize it. You don't know how to make sure you feel your best, right? And so it's something that we just want general awareness around. Being able to take a few deep breaths, sit back within ourselves, and really tune in to what our experience is and making sure that there's nothing holding us back, right? There's no negative beliefs or focuses that are making their way into our minds that are gonna obstruct us from achieving our goal. So number one, awareness. The second thing is your focus. And this may seem like common sense, but being so disciplined to only put your focus on what you want and what you don't and not what you don't want is a crucial part of being successful as a boxer because there's going to be tons of reasons for you to get distracted and start worrying about well what if this happens in the fight in the future or you know what if these opportunities don't present themselves in me you got to be able to lock in within yourself and understand that the only thing that you have control over is your focus and your choices so choose to focus on what you want and not what you don't want. And also just focusing on being present in the moment because we'll talk about flow states later on, but the only way you get into a flow state, the only way you can unlock your greatest potential is by being here right now. And you probably know that because if a punch is coming at you, you can't consciously be trying to move out of the way or subconsciously move out of the way if your mind is on something that happened in the past or in the future, you gotta be right here, right now. I mean, you can actually train that just through simple breathing exercises. So taking five minutes just to follow your breath in a cycle, into the nose, out through your mouth. That is mental fitness training, that's mental strength training. I actually made a video on that for getting you anchored in the present moment. All right, number three is getting clarity about what you want. Obviously, when you get in the ring, you want to win, right? But you don't want to leave any of that stuff um, not clear, all right? You want to know what you want to go execute on once you get in the ring. You want to know, hey, this is my game plan. This is where I see it going down. This is how I'd like to win. And so you want to have that clarity in your mind and be able to live that whole experience of winning within your mind before you even step in the ring. Step number four is going to be aligning your beliefs with what you want to create. Now, if you have limiting beliefs that are going to hold you back from achieving what you say you want, you're never going to have it. So if you don't believe you deserve to be a world champion, you'll never be one. 
because your subconscious is constantly creating the possibilities for your life and your subconscious runs your whole life. And I've talked about this in past videos so you can explore the channel and learn a little bit more about that. But long story short, your beliefs have to align with the vision that you're creating for your life and your boxing career. So you need to believe that you deserve to win. You need to believe that you're the best fighter in the world. You need to believe that you're the hardest fighting work, hardest working fighter in the world. You need to believe that you're destined for greatness and glory. You need these beliefs deeply ingrained inside of you because when they are, you're gonna subconsciously start taking the action that you need to take to become all those things that you believe you are. So they become true because you believe them to be true. You understand that? So you're choosing your beliefs. And Muhammad Ali was one of the greatest people at doing this. He always said, I, only, I didn't even know how great I was until you know, I repeated it over and over again that I'm the greatest. It made its way to his subconscious level. It became a belief and he was able to manifest that in the world. All right, step five, align your habits with what you want. So whatever it is you say you want, whether it's to win your fight or to become a champion with a belt or whatever it is, if you're an amateur boxer, uh, if you're trying to have success in the Golden Glove level, you need to make sure your habits are reverse engineered from that vision that, of what you want to have happen. So that means you're saying, okay, if I want to achieve these things, well, what do my mental and physical habits need to look like on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis? How much am I training? Am I doing strength training? Am I doing recovery? What's going on with my nutrition? How much am I sparring? Uh, how much am I doing my visualization? How much am I watching film trying to improve? All those things are habits that need to be put in place and they're all a part of your mental fitness training regimen. Step number six is going to be getting your confidence up. And so getting your general confidence just comes through experience. As you know, the more you fight, the more confident you get. But you can also train specific confidence. So if you know there's some things that you want to improve on specifically skill-wise, what you can do is go through visualizations of watching these things happen in your mind before you actually go and do them. And so if you're working with your trainer and he's like, hey, you have this bad habit, you need to change it to this. You need to go in your mind, get yourself at a deeply relaxed level. There's meditations on this channel to help you with this. And you need to watch yourself performing that skill perfectly. Perfect practice in the mind, those repetitions is going to allow you to translate that into the physical world and to be able to bring it into the ring in the moments that count the most. Because what you're doing is literally subconsciously programming your mind to show up and act the right way uh, with the right form in the physical world. So you gotta make sure that you have the confidence to match and doing visualization is a huge part of that formula. All right, last couple here. Step number seven, set yourself up to get into flow. So like I said earlier, a big part of getting into flow is being able to be present. And so if to be present, we oftentimes need to train ourselves to get into that present state of awareness. So doing something like a, a short meditation, five minutes, just practicing breathing, or anything that gets you grounded here and now is gonna be really good for setting yourself up for flow. And then also creating the environment in general around you that's going to be optimal for flow. So if you Google 17 flow triggers, there's a lot out there. I'm not going to go through them all. But one thing that's important is that you're always challenging yourself, but you're not drowning. So you're not overwhelming yourself where you can't grow. You want to challenge yourself just enough. So you're kind of coming up against the ceiling of what's possible for you. But you don't want to be just so overwhelmed that you can't do anything. You can't make progress because you're not going to be able to drop into a flow state. Flow states are subconscious experiences because what we're doing is we're allowing the experience to happen so we can just let all that hard work and those repetitions that we've done in the past show up in the moments that count the most. So that's my two cents on flow state. The final thing, step number eight, is to surrender. When you get in the ring, you know that all the hard work has already been done. At this point, you have to surrender to doing the best you can in the present moment and allowing what is gonna to happen to happen because there's only two things you can control. Your focus, so staying present, and staying presently aware, and your choices. And you've already made all those choices leading up to that fight, so it's time to, to execute, it's time to listen to your coach, uh, your trainer, and do the best you can and surrender the outcome because it's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right, that is 
basically what I wanted to share with you in regards to the eight steps to uh, honing in your mental fitness training for boxing. Of course, we can go much deeper into each one of these and that's the reason I set up a full on eight phase training program. So if you wanna train your mind to be able to control how you feel, how you're behaving and what you're creating, check out the B app. It's a B mental fitness training app designed to specifically help you with this. It's linked up in the description below and you can learn a little about that through the three day free mental strength course that I've designed for you. So check it out. Let me know what you think. If you get in there and you want some additional coaching, I'm always available to support you as well. I'll put my contact info in the description below so you can check that out. So thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, drop any questions you have below, send this to a boxer that you know would appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video.